Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. Thanks so much for checking in today. I get a lot of messages from folks that ask me, John, how do I get started in Pelagun air gun hunting? Well, I thought I would break down all those questions today in a video and kind of maybe give you a better understanding on what some of your minimum requirements are and what you can do to have a more fun and safe experience when you're out here hunting with pellet guns. Come along. I'll put my notes down here because I wrote down a lot of questions that folks had. Now, first off, I want to say is know your local, county, and state laws as it pertains to hunting. Some areas you can't hunt with pellet guns. Some areas such as in California, they're lead free zones. I can't tell you specifically. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of homework. Every state has a department of fish and game. And I would assume they all have websites where you're able to download all the rules, regulations and laws as they pertain to your state, county and municipality. That's my first disclaimer. Another question that I get is, what caliber should I hunt with? Well, the two main calibers that are out there is the 177 caliber and the 22 caliber. Now, is that all inclusive to air guns? No, they also make 20 calibers, 25 calibers, 30 calibers, the list goes on and on. Today I'm gonna to be talking about 177 and 22 calibers and how they pertain to you because they are the most common in regards to pellet size and availability. Now, it is recommended that you don't want any less than 12 foot pounds of pressure coming out of the muzzle. So, in layman's terms, what does that mean to you? Well, if you have a 177 caliber gun, you're looking at a minimum, and I'm talking out the muzzle, feet per second velocity, with a 7.9 grain pellet of 827 feet per second. On average, that'll give you around 12 foot pounds of pressure coming out of the muzzle that will ethically take game. Now, for 22 caliber, we're looking at an average 14.3 grain pellet is gonna be about 615 feet per second minimum requirement. This is why you see me, and I've done numerous videos, I crony all my air guns so I know what they're shooting. I'll cut away right now and I'll show you a range card that I have taped onto my stock and I make range cards so I know, one, how fast the gun's shooting, then I zero it in, and then I make a range card based on distance so I know whether to hold over or under so I can have an ethical, accurate shot on small game. Now, with that, you always wanna be aware of your surroundings. Whenever you're hunting, you always wanna be aware of what's behind the game that you're hunting. What area are you in? You don't wanna be close to residential areas. I come out here in the woods. You wanna do the same. You wanna get an area where there's not a lot of folks, there's not a lot of people running around where you can safely use this gun. And yes, I call it a gun because now these air guns are hitting velocities that are right up there with the powder burners. A lot of the 22 calibers now, especially in a pre-charged pneumatic, are shooting well over a thousand feet per second. Well, a 22 rimfire shoots 1,280 feet per second. So, the technology is there and the velocities are there to ethically take game now with these guns. Now, what sort of game can you hunt with these guns? Well, in regards to small game, you could hunt cottontail rabbits, jackrabbits, squirrels, depending on which squirrels. Down here in SoCal, you can't hunt tree squirrels, but you can hunt ground squirrels and such. Um, raccoons possums, woodchucks, and then as you progress in the bigger caliber guns, the 25 calibers, uh, I know 
Crossman and Benjamin makes a 357 caliber. Those will take hogs. Those will take coyotes. You can really, really go out and have fun economically and ethically. You just got to do it right. You have to know the game that you're hunting. You have to know shot placement. Now, let's talk about 177 caliber. 177 caliber is usually shooting really fast. And if you're not aware of where the vital organs are on that animal that you're going to harvest, a lot of times that pellet is moving so fast it's just going to go right through the animal and the animal's just going to keep on running. So, you have to do a little bit of homework. You have to study anatomy. You have to know if you can ethically take a headshot to be able to dispatch that animal in a quick, humane way. So, that comes with knowing your weapon, knowing the velocity of it, knowing the animals that you're going to hunt, knowing the anatomy of the animals that you're going to hunt, practicing. If you're shooting a 177 caliber pellet at 20 yards, 25 yards, you should be able to put all your rounds in the size of a nickel. If you can't do that, then I would practice until you can do that so you can do an ethical shot. Because like I said, it's cruising at such a high velocity, if you miss a heart, if you miss a lung, it's just going to go right through that small game. 22 caliber, the pellets at least twice the size of a 177. So you have a lot of energy that when that pellet hits, it's sending this shock wave right through this animal. So a 22 caliber pellet, for me, in my humble opinion, is what I hunt with. They're readily available. You can find 22 caliber pellets at Walmart just about all day, every day. 500 pellets to a tin, about 10 bucks, as opposed to 500 rounds of 22 rimfire, which is going anywhere between what? 50 and 100 bucks, depending on your locale, depending on the availability. So there's a cost advantage and the fun factor. A lot of them, if you, have, if you live in the country, you can shoot in your backyard and practice and have fun. Now, if I'm shooting a 22 caliber to ethically take animals, and I'm saying to 20, 25 yards, I put all my rounds in the size of a quarter. If you can put them in the size of a quarter, my humble opinion, after doing this for many, many years, is that you can effectively and ethically harvest small game with a 22 caliber. Just food for thought, wanted to put that out there. It'll give you something to work for. If you practice and you can't put the rounds in the size of a nickel for a 177 or the size of a quarter for a 22 caliber, then you got to keep practicing, folks. Just straight up, I got to keep it real. Now, top of the list for me is protecting the safety of people and property that I'm around. As a hunter, I'm going to conduct myself in a way that ensures that I do everything that is safe as possible. I know my surroundings. I know the people that I'm hunting with. I know that if I'm gonna take a shot that folks are behind me and such. I know what's behind that rock pile or what's behind that target that I'm shooting at so I don't hurt property or God forbid I don't hurt someone. These are things that you have to think of as you go out. A lot of states require hunter safety courses. I highly recommend it. You cannot have enough training when you're in and around firearms, air guns, anything that's going to shoot a projectile. You can never have enough training. That's enough preaching on that. Now, for me, I like to do a base level sighting in for an air gun I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a powder burner. Between 20 and 25 yards. I usually like 20 yards. I don't know. That's just who I am and it works for me. So what I do is I sight my gun in or my air pistol for 20 yards and then I make my little range card and then if I'm not sure of distance I use a laser range finder. Now what I'll do is I, I usually go out and I maybe set what we call setting on an area where I'll sit somewhere and I'll observe. What I do is I'll usually laser range find predominant objects out there, a rock pile, 
a downed log, a tree. That way I know, I predetermine how far that distance is. So when I see game, if they fall within that rock pile and I've lasered it, and I know that it's 25 yards, and I'm not sure what my holdover is, I look at my card real quick, and I know what my holdover is. If I see the tree way off in the distance, and I've already lasered it, and I predetermine, and I know how far that is now, then I can look at my card and I know the proper holdover based on the velocity of the gun, the pellet that I'm using, and I can take a very accurate shot. Another vital piece of equipment is a pair of binoculars. You don't have to go out and buy a ton of money to get a pair of binoculars, but I do recommend at least 10 power. And the reason that I use binoculars, anybody that's glassed a field if you're using your scope and you're looking through your scope all day you are going to get bug-eyed your eyeball is just going to kill you at the end of the day from looking through the crosshairs all day this way you can look you're keeping both eyes open and a lot of times you're sitting for minutes hours half a day you're out hunting depending on what you're going after you have to be patient so you're glassing, you're looking. It just keeps your eyes from going crazy. And thing two, you don't want to be muzzling anybody. If you're in an area and you're glassing through your scope, and heaven forbid it's a person you don't want to be muzzling. You want to know the object and make a secured judgment that what that item is, is it's either a cottontail rabbit, it's a squirrel, it's a raccoon. It's not a person out hiking or it's somebody's dog or something. So you want to use glasses as well. I get a lot of folks asking me, John, what do you prefer? Brake barrel, CO2, or pre-charged pneumatic? And I usually tell them yes, yes, and yes. It depends on where I'm hunting, what I'm doing, the weather, uh, I've talked about that in a couple other videos where the technology now in brake barrels where they're using the gas ram technology, you can leave them cocked all day long and you're not going to lose velocity. CO2, as I've talked about in other videos, is very temperature regulated. As the temps drop, if you get below 60 degrees, I found in my humble opinion is that the velocities drop as well. Uh, days like today that maybe in the high 80s, low 90s, CO2 is great because that can's warm. You got a lot of air pressure. You got a lot of gas pushing that pellet down range. The most stable platform, in my humble opinion, that I found was pre-charged pneumatic air guns. And that's basically a gun that has an air reservoir such as this. And it just holds, this one holds 2,000 PSI, but I have... Another one holds up to 3,000 PSI, and normally you can get 25 to 35 good hard-hitting shots out of that. It's not temperature regulated. It'll work hot, cold, and you get pretty consistent shot groups with pre-charged pneumatic. But the prices go up with that as well. You don't have to break the bank to be able to get in to doing air gun hunting. I have a Crossman Titan gp it's a 22 caliber i bought a refurb one off of uh, a website and it was like at the time 89 bucks regular price they're i think like a buck 30 but still 130 bucks for a 22 caliber air gun can hunt all day with that thing and just have tons of fun co2 the only constraints is that you have to either buy 12 gram or 188 gram bottles or if you do mods like I did with my uh, RWS 850, where I put a nine ounce paintball tank on that thing and I get down to a paintball tank uh, refill place and for usually two or three bucks and I get about four to 500 good hard hitting shots out of that. The only issue with a PCP is that you need an air pump or a bottle and that's an added expense. Now, to close this video out, you can have a lot of fun coming out here, relatively inexpensive hobby that won't break the bank. You're developing good skills. It's a way to bring the wife out 
kids out, teach them good, sound shooting skills and ethical hunting. I highly encourage it and I highly promote it because that's the future of our sport. I ask again that you know your state, local, and municipal laws, that you take a hunter safety course, and that you come out here being a responsible sportsman and you leave the area better than you found it. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is John of the Wingman 115 channel. I hope to see you again on the next video. Take care, folks.